New York City, the backdrop. Today we're on Long Island, Hempstead, New York, on the campus of Hofstra University, where two old rivals, Duke and Maryland, get set to go at it. A spot in championship weekend on the line. Could see an outstanding matchup right here at this faceoff dot. Luke Weirman, who was sensational in Maryland's first round win against Princeton, taking on Jake Naso and Duke wins possession off the opening faceoff. Count is 11 in total, and we'll call their names quite often. Andrew McAdory played his high school across at St. Anthony's. He'll shoot the bouncer. Soaked up that time by McNaney. They feel like the ball has to go through Zawada for this offense really to percolate. So they want Zapatello on him. Canfield is on O'Neal. Duke gets on the board first, and it's Charles Balsamo. But the turnover. And the freshman, Jamison, with a heads-up play outside of the cage. Balsamo is the recipient with a left-handed rip. That is big from a confidence perspective. For the sophomore, one in white. Only one assist in the last nine games. Now McAdory has the shorty after the big little switch. He's looking to take advantage. Tried to get to the goal, but the help was there. Dyson Williams on the outside. Picks up the rebound, though. Zawada on Ajax. Here's O'Neal. Back to his left. Gets just a little bit of space, and it's enough to find the back of the net. He loves the over move, too. You see how they're flushing him to the underneath move. He goes initially to get under and then rolls back, so the slide help isn't there. No angle on the shot. He'll take it behind the cage. He's got to love this matchup here for a dodge. Williams, bouncer, McNady, no problems. The Terps with more turnovers than good offensive opportunities here. And Duke right back on the attack. It ends up. To McAdory. O'Neal takes the extra step, shoots. McNady makes the save. He's hot early. That's four saves. See, this is the matchup with Zawada and Zapatello. Maryland feels they could take the initiator, the best passer from Duke out of the mix. Grant Mitchell playing, but it's Dyson Williams. On one end, fifth year, long stick midfielder, Tyler Carpenter. One of the top scorers in NCAA lacrosse history. Goes by the name of Williams, Dyson Williams. You think about what Weirman was able to do. He was dominant, he's off to a good start here. He can shoot two, and he scores! This time, he's the goal scorer. You don't want to slide off 52, he'll make you pay. We've seen it time and time again, the evolution of the face-off position with the goal scorers. Will Lynch with a similar G in the first game for Notre Dame. Luke Weirman cashes in. Swatted to the ends in the near side. Another St. Anthony's product to another one. O'Neal spins. Puts his shoulder to a defender and shoots and scores. But he soaks checks and it looks like he's losing his angle and he finds that bottom corner. He beats an All-American netminder in McNaney to his stick side at the bottom corner. That ball is flying, he's moving. He's just completely different with regards to his skill set. Here's Zawada. Up top, here's Johnson. He'll shoot the bouncer. McNaney gobbles it up. McAdory, head up. O'Neal over to the far side of Denenza. Tries to squeeze it inside, and behind the back goes Williams. Caputo with the turnover. Gobbles it up. Gives this offense another opportunity. I said it was danger zone for John Tillman because you give this Duke offensive team another opportunity late in the first quarter. They'll make it count. You know what I love about that, Cotter? He catches this ball lefty. He knows if he shoots it lefty, he's going into the teeth of the defense. He'll get checked there. 
And he has the shorties to do it, too. He's got these, these animals, like Aiden McGuire on the ball, who can lock you down. Hits the far pipe, Erksa. Erksa, back up top to Spanos, far side of Syracuse. He'll use a Maltz pick to try and get free, and he does. He'll step down, and the bouncer scores. This time, he keeps it in his left hand, and it looks like Jamison gets a piece at first. I don't love the lack of explosiveness on that shot from Jamison, though. You see that his step is too late. The step is almost as the ball hits his stick. The step should be as the ball's approaching. Erksa. Why he's getting into the body of, of Kenny Brower is besides me. I mean, Kenny Brower outweighs him by probably 30 pounds. Erks is one of the fastest guys out there. Good look to Maltz. Erks gives it up. Always good. Whittier draws the eyes of the defense and then just the patented finish. This is a nice move by Whittier as he senses a slide. You see Maltz is following where the slide's coming from. And watch the release here, high to low. You change a little level, you get a flag. Now you can cash in and Duke was able to kill off that man down. Even strength for O'Neal. Got the short stick on him. He's hungry. Save made by McNaney. Murphy on the shorty. Soaks a wrap check. Tried to get the pass to the far side, but Jamison was too quick. Few here in Hempstead, New York. Notre Dame has already advanced to next weekend's championship weekend semifinals. With the win over Georgetown. Dyson Williams, too quick. A turnover by Maryland, resulting in a Duke goal. Normally, Dyson Williams has to work hard inside to find that big of a seam. This time, too many Maryland shirts are discombobulated there. They're all following the ball. No one is beat. I don't know why they're sliding. I don't know why they're helping to Zawada there. So the way to do it is play mistake-free. You can't have these turnovers on easy transfers. Maltz, the extra pass, but Jamison makes the save. Before that last Maryland possession, that was Duke's first turnover of the day. They've done a very good job taking care of the ball. Max Sloat. Handle his first big spot in an NCAA tournament. First quarter, not tested too much. Second quarter, this one is gobbled up by the freshman, and then the sophomore, Sloat. Four straight, I thought they looked really good last week against St. Joe's. Weirman again, and he scores again. Scored in the first quarter with his right hand. This time he sees a seam in the alley to go left. Win it, go righty, go lefty, keeping your team in it. A lot of times in NCAA tournament play, you rely on senior leadership to get it done. Luke Weirman is doing his part, the rest of the team. Johnson on Stamos. Back to his left hand, gets it free. The bouncer, McNaney with the save. Swata wants a pick here on Zapatello. Zap comes under it, though. Williams couldn't handle the pass. Canfield loses it. Another turnover. Skip pass, Brennan shoots. Jamison with the foot save. Syracuse trying to track it down. And it's picked up by Zapatello. So Syracuse stays back. Zapatello joins the attack. What a heady play by Zapatello. He's probably the best unit in college lacrosse in terms of those guys playing defense from the midfield. Stepped out Syracuse. Scores! Tight roping the midline here. Should I go? Should I stay? He knows now he's got a player back. That ground ball gave Syracuse, who I said was a two-handed player. Remember his first goal was lefty on the run? Murph. Loses his stick. Another 
great check by Carpenter. And now it's Duke the other way. He passes in front, Williams scores! What a turn of events. He's going to stalk you. Murphy, you drop something and in transition. Tyler Carpenter knows where Dyson Williams is. And I think Dyson Williams holding that cut to the last second is the reason why he's wide open. There's even more time on the backside to find time and room to shoot and let it spray. Here's Maltz with under 10 seconds to shoot. Spanos gets a really good look, but it's deflected by Caputo. And using some stop and goes, and but they were quicker. They weren't post-ups. And you can't post up against a Duke defense. They're too strong individually. Maltz will shoot and score. Duke is taking some of that juice, and it's not the right kind. A basic transfer from the defensive end gives this Maryland offense another opportunity. And then your defense starts getting tired, Cotter. And Daniel Maltz with an incredible bounce shot to the upper corner. Little swim move, gets the separation, and Caputo loses his sticks. Swims under the defender, now he shoots. Jameson is there. Here's Balsamo, Johnston. Gobbled up by McNaney. Kelly up top to Syracuse. A nice move to get his right hand free, but an even better move defensively by Duke. Now Jameson's out of the goal. O'Connell checks it, checks it, tracks it down though. O'Connor. Do your tie today. <laughs> with, with, with the flaps of the collar, you couldn't reach. You couldn't reach. I know, I couldn't, I couldn't put my collar down. It's embarrassing. Jameson playing well here in the second half. Weren't we talking at halftime about adjustments John Tillman will make? I mean, this guy is unbelievable as a coach. Intercepted, bad pass by McNaney. Here comes McGuire. Williams, that kills him. Another turnover, and Dyson Williams makes him pay. It's a turnover, it's McGuire to a player on the left side of goal line extended is borderline automatic. What's the plan here offensively for Maryland, Clark? Now five seconds. Now it's going to be desperation time. And Malver's going to have to make it happen. Gets it to Brennan, who scores! That's a huge goal as the shot clock winds down to zero. But they waited too deep in the shot clock, so it was desperation mode. But they still found an opportunity with Jack Brennan who hits the back of the net, shooting only 12% this season. Gives it right back to Duke. Simple plays, that's 17 turnovers on the, on the game. And we're just starting the fourth quarter. Frizzoli scoops up the GB here. Now he loses his stick. Spanos with the check. Berksa loses his footing, gets back up. Brower has done an outstanding job on Braden Erksa. Here's Syracuse. Has a shot and scores! Maryland hunkers down on the ride. The double team, Spanos with the ground ball. And then Syracuse, who came to College Park as a scout team player for multiple years, never lost faith, continued to work on his craft. Three goals today. An assist, now that Enza gets it back. Zawada, he shoots, kick save by McNaney, and it kicks, it kicks away from him. Spanos. Gets a step on Bard, hits the pipe. Fresh 60 for Maryland. We're all tied up. That's three in a row for the Terps. Connor, you called it, that critical moment at 9-7. It was Syracusa with a brilliant right-handed dodge. Braden Erksa to Mr. Everything, Jack Chorus. Maltz, try to get it to Maltz down low. It's picked up by Spanos. Here's Whittier. Still in play, and Erksa scores! The ball is finally bouncing Maryland's way. It was
was turnover after turnover. Now Urksa is Johnny on the spot. And dare I say, the Terps are leading in this ball game. Behind a Balsamo. He'll try and attack the shorty. Only three to shoot. Williams shoots and scores as the shot clock winds down. You talk about a shot in the arm. Williams gives it to him. That you cannot lose. Jake Taylor from Notre Dame. Peyton Cormier from Virginia. And that man right there, Dyson Williams. Charles Balsamo, almost desperation, but it's a great pass with his right hand to find Williams. The shot has to leave his stick. Doesn't have to cross the goal line before it hits zero. Now he's being checked by Carpenter. Carpenter gets checked off on the pick, so McGuire's on Erksa. The quickness and speed, and he takes advantage of it. In a classic battle of old school ACC lacrosse, Erksa capitalizes. Duke has been the one team, other than those two Dyson Williams goals, in really unsettled situations. They haven't been able to get anything going. 34, that might change it all, oh, and he does. Yeah, let that guy change their fortunes. Filming through X, which we saw in between these games today. I asked Brennan O'Neill, why don't you use your right hand more? It's lethal, it has smoke, and it will create opportunities when defenders play you heavy lefty, make them pay righty. My word. For their careers not to end. Slow wanted to get it back to O'Neill. It's McAdory here. He gets in a good spot. Shoots. Save me. McGuire keeping Whittier at bay. Beautiful pass to Maltz, and he scores! Elbows, feet, do whatever you have to do to make the stop. It's a clear, and this is a dime of a pass by Whittier. What an incredible through pass by 13 in black to find Maltz, who sets his feet. Loses his foot and gets it back. He's got Erks up top. Nine to shoot, Erks has got to make something happen. Now Syracuse, he fires, Jameson makes the save. Now looking for the outlet. Did he give it away? They gave it away, so fresh 60 for Maryland. But they've been much better in the second half, and that's what's ignited this comeback. Can they make it a two-goal advantage? Maltz, scores! No, they say no, no goal. The Maryland bench exploded. The officials came in and said no goal. Christopher DeFelice, Alfred Pugh, Patrick Kenny, those are our officials today. Look at it again, Maltz, the bouncer. Hits off of Jamison, off the pipe. Here's the issue. It looks like it potentially could be hitting the line there, but prior to it, the ball looks like it's deepest prior to dropping and being near the line. After the, here, this right here. Yes, that that's looks the deepest like part. In. To me, that's where the ball is deepest into the net. Definitely hits the line, I think, on the bounce. After review, the ball was good. I think the officials made the right call there. I do too. As it has all game long. Sloat, he shoots. McNaney makes the save. Loose ball in the middle of the field. Picked up by the Terps. Till still has one timeout. If he can get into the offensive end, he can call, but he won't need to. They have completely taken over. Jack Redden sends the ball sky high. The Terps celebrate. 
Book your trip to the city of brotherly love, Turb Nation. You're going back to championship weekend.